Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be pretend shopping the Sephora VIB sale. I'm coming up with a hypothetical situation. If I had a thousand dollars to burn at Sephora, these are the items that I would pick up and I figured it'd be fun to take you along with me, show you my thought process and yeah, just have fun pretend shopping. So if you wanna burn some fake cash with me, definitely keep on watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, I just wanna start off with the caveat of if I really had $1,000 to spend at Sephora, obviously I would not spend all of that money on myself. I, feel like I would definitely purchase things for my mom, for my sisters, for my mother-in-law, for other people. But just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna focus on products that if it was $1,000 that only I could spend on products that I really want. I don't know, I feel like it would just be more entertaining than me like going through what all of these different people would want. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, so if I had $1,000, which I don't, I <laughs> wish I did, but I don't, especially not in this economy. If I had $1,000 to spend at Sephora, these are the items that I would most likely pick up. And actually, I came up with the idea for this video. I've seen a lot of people do actual shop with me's, but because I don't have $1,000, and also because I don't wanna miss out on the sale, I have FOMO, I thought it'd be fun just to do what my aunt calls diet shopping. So it's basically like you just add everything that you want, that your heart could ever desire to your cart, but you don't have to check out. So you get all the thrill of of shopping without the guilt of actually paying. So it's like the best of both worlds. So let me go ahead and get on this for a site. I've got my coffee with me, just microwaved it to heat it up. So if I had a thousand dollars, I'm going for the big guns. I'm going for the products that I have had my eye on for a while, but that I like never have taken the plunge on because they're super expensive. So I'm thinking of brands like Natasha Denona, I love her eyeshadows. I also love her concealer. I'm wearing it today. Speaking of the concealer, the Natasha Denona High Glam Brightening and Hydrating Medium to Full Coverage Crease Proof Serum Concealer. This is amazing. This concealer launched earlier this year and I have been absolutely obsessed with it. It is really full coverage, but somehow still hydrating on the under eyes without slipping and sliding around. It almost smooths the under eye area. It's gorgeous. The shade I have is... Right now I have YP3, which works well for me, but it's a tiny bit too yellowish with my more fair fall to winter complexion. So I'm thinking I would pick up the shade N1. It's always funny when I see the models like on the site, I'm like, am I really that, that fair? Because I feel like I don't look that pale. Not like it's bad, but I don't know. Does that make sense? Okay, so N1. Yeah, N1 looks maybe a tiny bit pink. I'm, I hope it wouldn't be too pink, but N2 looks too deep for under my eyes. Maybe as a spot concealer on my face it could work, but usually I really want just a slightly brighter concealer for under my eyes, which is what I love using this one for. Another Natasha Denona item that I would definitely pick up is the new I Need a Nude eyeshadow palette. It just looks like the most perfect everyday glam palette. You got cool tones, a couple peachy tones, and some really beautiful, stunning, glimmery shades, which I'm just dying to get all over my eyelids. So add to basket. Another new product from sort of the opposite end of the price spectrum. Glossier recently launched a foundation, which I have been itching to try. Their stretch fluid foundation for buildable coverage. And I'm really intrigued by this foundation because it's supposedly really good for your skin. It has a lot of skincare ingredients. Wild Rose Berry. Is that like actual rose? Or is it a berry that looks like a rose? I don't know. And I really like the price too. For a Sephora foundation, I feel like it's pretty reasonably priced. From the reviews that I've seen, it looks like this foundation runs a bit light. So let's go with shade light two rather than like light one, say. That's a basket. Sweet. So in addition to picking up like new items that I wanted to check out, I would definitely stock up on some of my like staple high-end products. One that I'm thinking of is the pressed setting powder from Pat McGrath. Such a pricey powder, but in my opinion, totally worth it because it's pretty much undetectable on the skin. And if you have dry skin, 
it's a lifesaver. It is like a filter for your under eyes. If you have really deep set under eyes or just puffy under eyes and you want something super blurring and lightweight, this is the powder for you. Pores, puffiness, lines, it's like a magic eraser. I don't know how this powder does it, but it does it and it is freaking fantastic. So definitely gonna stock up on that. Another stock up item is my signature scent. Not really my signature scent, but it's like pretty much the only perfume that I wear. Where is it? It's from the brand Seven Virtues. So Vanilla Woods is probably my all-time favorite perfume. I love it because it's not too in your face. It's not gonna be suffocating. It has a hint of vanilla, but it's not too sweet. The vanilla is balanced out really nicely with the pear notes in this. I feel like the pear and the rose give it sort of a fresh cleanliness that really complements the vanilla -y ness I'm terrible at describing fragrances, but I don't know. If you ever get the chance to smell this in a Sephora store, definitely take advantage because I think it's really, really good. It is very expensive. It's $88. I don't know why perfumes are so expensive, but I would definitely snack one of these. And I'm just seeing here that they have a new scent called Cherry Ambition. Ooh. Oh, I also really like that all of these fragrances are hypoallergenic, cruelty-free, they don't have phthalates, vegan, clean. So I never feel like bad putting this on my skin. So cherry, saffron, and vanilla. I love anything with vanilla. And the cherry intrigues me, especially for fall. Feeling brave, igniting ambition, and making a statement. Ooh, mood-enhancing perfume. Hmm, floral and warm undertones to embrace your ambition. That sounds good. So I think with my $1,000, I would definitely pick up a little trial size. I don't know if I feel confident to pick up the full size, but definitely the little roller ball, I would, I would add to cart. All right, so, so far we're already at like $300. Jumping back to concealer, I would want to pick up this concealer from Givenchy. I've heard really good things about it and I'm super intrigued to test it right here. The Prism Libre Skin Caring 24 Hour Hydrating Radiant Correcting Creamy Concealer. From what I've seen, it looks like it has pretty good coverage, but it also is supposed to be radiant and hydrating, which I love. The older I get, the less matteness I can take under the eyes. So it retails for $37. You get 0.37 ounces. I think, I think this would be the shade I would go with. And the basket. All right, let's get some fun, like, cheek stuff. Let's get some blush, because I'm all about blush these days. Ooh, I saw this the other day as I was searching the, like, new at Sephora section of the website, and this caught my eye. Doesn't this pink look gorgeous? It's the most perfect light baby doll pink. It's not too cool toned to where it looks lavender, but it's also not a coral. It looks just gorgeous. The most perfect neutral baby doll ballerina pink in this highlighter looks stunning as well. I was literally salivating as I saw this. Like, look at this. Oh my gosh. It looks so pretty. So pretty. So pretty. So pretty. And I feel like it's going to be pretty tiny because it says mini and it's only $29, which is pretty affordable for Charlotte Tilbury. But just looking at the photo, it doesn't look too small. And I mean, the colors just look gorgeous. The packaging looks amazing. And Charlotte Tilbury marketing gets me like all the sparkle and the glitz and the glam and the old Hollywood. I'm sold. Add to basket. The deeper shade looks pretty as well. It's just, I think the highlighter would be too dark on my complexion, but this blush, it almost reminds me of like a deeper pillow talk, that mauve brownish sort of shade, which I feel like is going to be really complimentary on a lot of different skin tones. So if you have a deeper medium medium to tan complexion, I think this would look really great on you. And then Ooh, this is a really good set too. I love the LYS Higher Standard Cream Blushes. This is a really underrated cream blush formula in my opinion. They last super, super long on the cheeks. One of the most long-lasting formulas. They stay in place. They don't slip and slide around. They don't emphasize texture on your cheeks either. They dry down to more of a satiny finish, but they're really pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way. So I feel like even these mini sizes are going to last you a really long time. So in this set, you get three, which is awesome. And you get this mauve purpley shade. You get this 
medium tone rosy shade called self love this one is a shimmer i've never tried that finish before and then you get humble which is a cool soft pink and i've been wanting to pick up this shade for a while because again it just looks like the perfect everyday pinky tone and i like that they show it on a variety of different skin tones so you can see how it will look on different complexions i think that's really nice and i think more brands should do that so definitely adding that to basket Oh, I really want to pick up one of these Gen Nude Blonzer Blush and Bronzers from Bare Minerals. These are sort of supposed to be a hybrid between a bronzer and a blush, so they have like that toasty undertone. But from what I've seen, they have more of a somewhat like shimmery, glowy finish, which I think is really nice in a blush just for more of like that sun-kissed look. I would either pick up Kiss of Pink or Kiss of Spice. I'm really drawn to Kiss of Pink. As you can tell, I love a good pinky blush. But because I'm getting the other pink blushes for something different, and because I don't have very many tones like this in my collection, I think let's go for Kiss of Spice, which is just a really great blush that you could pair with like any look because it's not going to compete. All right, let's go over to Highlight. Because if there's any section in my makeup collection, that rhymed, that I feel like is lacking, it is highlight. And here, first on the page, this, this beauty, I personally already have Enlighten. This formula is super, super smooth, very thin. It's a baked formula and it's ultra glimmery, shimmery gorgeousness. It looks almost wet on the cheeks. But this shade is almost a little bit too intense for me on a daily basis. So I think I would want to pick up this shade Exhilarate, which is just slightly more golden and a little bit, I feel, more natural for my complexion. So let's add that to cart. This has been on my list forever. I think mostly for the packaging, if I'm being honest, which is a not very good reason to buy a product. But... From what I've seen, it has more of like a pillowy, quilted packaging, which I just think is the cutest, most luxurious thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I think it'd be such a treat to use. I've never picked it up, obviously, because of that huge $50 price tag, which seems absurd to spend on a highlight. But if I had $1,000 to spend, I would probably take the plunge finally, because I think... It just looks so stinking pretty. I think I would go with Nude Glow. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I feel like any of those tones would work on my skin tone, but I don't usually like something too golden or too pink. I want something to look kind of natural, so that's what I would go with. I've also seen really great things about this Moon Crush highlight from Too Faced, which is sort of random, but from what I've seen, this is like amazing quality glossy glow next gen highlighter blends easily into the skin it doesn't look like a stripe of white on your face but it is like super impactful which i personally really like an impactful highlight every now and again so which one looks brighter i guess shooting star yeah summer moon looks a little bit more bronzy where shooting star looks a little bit more champagne so i would go with shooting star Okay, let's see where we are. Oh my gosh, $500. Halfway there, friends. Let's go ahead and switch gears for a minute and go over to skincare. So honestly, I usually don't buy too much skincare at Sephora. I'm definitely more of a K-beauty skincare type of girly, but I do like a couple brands, specifically The Ordinary and First Aid Beauty and Polish Choice. Those are three of my favorite brands that they sell at Sephora. So I really like First Aid Beauty because they formulate their products with sensitive skin in mind, which I have very sensitive skin. And I really like their Pure Skin Face Cleanser. It doesn't get super sudsy, but it's sort of a gel-like cleanser that almost feels like hydrating on the skin. And it doesn't leave your skin feeling like stripped after you wash it. So... Let's go ahead and get the value size since we're getting a discount. And then in terms of 
moisturizers. Let's stock up on a moisturizer as well since we're here. I do like the Drunk Elephant Lala Retro Nourishing Whipped Cream. I've tried a sample size of this before and it is really, really nice. I've never purchased the full size because it's $62. But if I had $1,000, maybe I would add that to basket because again, I really do like it. And if I had $1,000, I wouldn't want to just get makeup. I would want to stock up on some necessities. Let's see if there's any serums I would want to get. Ooh, this looks intriguing from The Ordinary. Soothing and Barrier... I can't speak. Soothing and Barrier Support Serum. I love The Ordinary because they're sort of a no-frills skincare brand. They don't have fragrance or super cute packaging. It's very cut and dry, almost looks like it came just out of the lab. But I kind of like that about it because it's literally just good ingredients, nothing bad, nothing extra, just what your skin needs. So this is a multi-active solution designed to support skin barrier repair while soothing discomfort and reducing the look of redness. That sounds really good to me because I do suffer from breakouts occasionally, but the biggest thing I would say with my skin is that I suffer from dryness, upset skin barrier, and redness. So this sounds pretty perfect. It has vitamin B12, centella asiatica, gallic, gallic acid derivatives, targets redness, reducing water loss. Wow, that sounds good. I definitely need that. I already am losing enough water with all my caffeine intake, so... Let's add that to basket, give it a whirl. I like trying new products from The Ordinary as well because it is more affordable, so I don't feel like I'm going out on as big of a limb. Like, I'm not purchasing $100 worth of a product that I don't know if I'm gonna like, if that makes sense. This is another restock of something that I have loved forever. I actually first got this as a trial size in an advent calendar, like, six years ago for Christmas and I just tried it out on a whim and I swear to you the next morning when I woke up my skin looked so bright so clear I was shocked it was one of the first skincare products I felt really made a difference so I definitely would stock up on this it's amazing it's one of those cult classic products for a good reason all right and last oh let's go over to the gifts really quick because I was thinking about lip balm since we're on skincare and I know that Laneige had a lot of little lip balm sets. Like right here, they have a bunch of minis, but I think they had a full size somewhere. Here, let's see, is this a full size or is that a mini? Eight grams. Oh no, it's a small size. I wish it was a full size. That would be a, an amazing value. Ooh, I would definitely pick this up. The Lip Sleeping Mask in Peppermint. This is an expensive lip sleeping mask and you can definitely find really good affordable lip treatments. But I will say whenever it is winter time and my lips are feeling extremely chapped, dry, they're bleeding. Every time I use my Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, all of my dry lip problems are solved. It is really, really good. So definitely would want to stock up on these. Sometimes you can find these for better prices on K-beauty sites like Stylevana or Yes Style. But if I was getting a little discount and I had $1,000, again, I would pick one up. And I love peppermint. I actually have peppermint creamer in my coffee right now. Love, love, love peppermint. So if they have a peppermint lip mask, I would pick it up. Although my husband hates mint, so he probably wouldn't want to kiss me when I had this on, which stinks. But, you know, I just wear it on the nights when, you know, he's not home or... I'll kiss him before I put it on. <laughs> I also think this is a really good little set right here because you looks like you get a full size lip mask and then two little minis, which is fun. You get two holiday flavors, caramel apple and mango. Ooh, caramel apple sounds so good. Yeah, and you get the full size normal mask. So honestly, I'd probably pick this up too because again, you can't really go wrong with lip masks and I go through them like water. So I don't feel bad adding a bunch to my cart. And then what else? Oh yeah, I need lip liner. So usually when it comes to lips, I don't splurge with a lot of high-end products because I feel like you can find a lot of really great lip stuff at the drugstore. But I will say one category where high-end brands excel is with lip liner because they can make 
some of the most long-lasting lip liners on the market. A lot of times, drugstore lip liners can have good formulas. They can be creamy, they can have good shades, but they just don't last as long as some of the more high-end brands. For example, Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat Lip Liners. Some of the most budge-proof, bulletproof lip liners out there. So I personally own Pill Talk and I own Iconic Nude, but I have had my eye on Hot Gossip, which is described as a tawny rose pink for a while because it just looks a little deeper than Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk is good for like an everyday lip on my skin tone, but it's a little bit light sometimes for what I'm looking for. Sometimes I want a deeper lip liner so that I can create that ombre effect with a deeper lip line and something a little brighter in the center. So this looks like it could give me what I'm searching for. I also would pick up one of these Permagel Ultra Lip Pencils from Pat McGrath. I've never tried this formula, but I have heard it's pretty much the longest lasting lip pencil there is. And I know the shade Contour is Kathleen Light's favorite. Where is it? Six, shade six. Just a really cool toned brown. So let's just go with Contour. Contour, Structure, and Done Undone were like the three that I had in mind, but it doesn't look like they have every shade available right now. So I would pick up Contour just to try it because I have heard such great things about it. I've also heard these retractable lip liners from Sephora Collection are really good. And I think during the sale, everything that is Sephora Collection is 30% off. So it's a really great time to try anything from Sephora Collection that you've had your eye on. And personally, I feel like I'm missing a really, 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 really deep brown lip liner in my collection because I want to do like that 90s lip, really dark, intense lip line with something more bright, nudish, or even red in the center, sort of like that cherry cola lip look. But I just don't have anything like that in my collection. So I'm gonna go with the deepest shade, actually, Molasses. This might look completely terrible on me, but you know, it's more affordable because it's a house brand and it would be on sale. So I don't feel so bad sticking my neck out with that one. And before I forget, there was a gift set from Makeup Revolution with their artist pencils, like their lip liners slash pretty much you can use them anywhere, like on your face, eyes, lips, probably the two most common places that you would use them. This set looks so cool because you get five different shades and two of the shades are like their most popular shades. You get Wherever Walnut, which is a warm rose nude and Anywhere Caffeine, warm caramel nude. Those two I know are really popular. You also get a rich chocolate brown, a limitless brown, a black and a white, which are just like classic colors. You really can't go wrong. I mean, they're smaller sizes, but I feel like you're not gonna go through them that quickly. And for $35, I feel like that's a pretty fair price because then each little pencil is around five bucks, which I think is really good for a high-end brand. All right, let's see where we're at. $845. Okay, so we still got some money to burn. A category that's not as exciting, but definitely very crucial. Tools, an eyelash curler. Let me just tell you that cheap eyelash curlers are not worth it. I cannot stand a cheap eyelash curler because they just hurt my eyes, they don't work, they crimp your lashes, they hurt your lashes. And I just feel like these are more expensive, like this one from Shiseido, but it's not, like it'll last you forever. So I personally like investing in something a little better quality when it comes to eyelashes, just because it's like my eye area. <laughs> it's a very sensitive area and I don't want something that's just gonna not work very well. Ooh, I also love this brush from Rare Beauty. This is like my favorite concealer brush because it almost mimics the shape of your finger and it just blends concealer perfectly. So I would definitely buy a backup of this. I like their foundation brush a lot too. Going back to makeup, this is a palette that is honestly probably a little bit overpriced, but <laughs> I don't know why I just keep going back to it and I cannot stop thinking about this palette and I really, really want to try it. I know 
it is absurdly priced. It is $70. It is the Major Dimension 3 Matte Eyeshadow Palette from Patrick Ta. But I've seen people test this out and the shades look so opaque for mattes. Mattes are, seem very boring. They're not like glitz and glam like a shimmer, but they are very tricky to formulate and it's really hard to find good mattes, especially brighter colors like this that are opaque and don't look patchy on the eyelids. And from what I've seen, this is one of the best whites that has ever existed. <laughs> so. I definitely want to try this palette out because I personally like wearing matte eyeshadow a lot on a daily basis. So I feel like for me, it makes sense. There is another product from Sephora collection that I had my eye on. All right guys, so I actually didn't realize that my camera stopped recording. So the last two products, I'm just gonna have to do a voiceover unfortunately, but I added the 12 hour contour pencil from Sephora collection in the shade Tiramisu to my cart. And then I wanted to pick up one of these limited edition hourglass ambient lighting palettes. I like the Jaguar one because you get three blushes. It's a little bit deeper. The Jellyfish is the lightest shade, but I didn't like how you had only two blushes. I liked how the Jaguar had the three blushes and I also just preferred the packaging to be honest. So I added that to my cart as well. And yeah, that completes my total pretend Sephora haul. I'm really happy with everything that I picked out. I feel like it's a really good mix of new products that I want to try and old products that I know that I love that I would really want to stock up on. So yeah, I'm sorry again for having to do the voiceover, but I hope you guys enjoyed and let me know if you would pick up any of these products or what you would pick up or are going to pick up at Sephora for the VIB sale. So yeah guys, that completes this video. That was my pretend Sephora shop with me, what I would purchase at the Sephora VIB sale if I had $1,000 to spend. I hope this video was fun or at the very least entertaining or took your mind off of the worries of the world. I had a lot of fun doing this. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in my next video.